Hey, what's up, Josh? Not much. How are you? I am good. So, hey, welcome to the latest and greatest episode of Wise Bites TV podcast with Dean and Josh. All right, Josh, today we're going to explore something super cool, uh, the cutting edge world, cutting edge world of accessibility technology and the mind-blowing advan- advancements in image to text object recognition tools. It's tough to say. Uh, by All the new stuff version is tough G- to say. Jipete? Yes. I, Jipete? Jipete? How do you say Jipete? <laughs> Jipete oh, it's four. French. Oh, mm. Jipete. Chap on. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jipete. Right. Um, so, Josh, like, we're making Jipete jokes, but this is really going to revolutionize uh, global accessibility for blind and low vision uh, people. However, it's just the tip of the iceberg because after what we mentioned today, there's going to be so many applications for things other than um, just those that are visually you know, challenged. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, the mission of Be My Eyes. And I know you know a little bit about it, but Be My Eyes is an, is an organization and a mobile app. And they have one goal, it's to make the world more accessible for blind and low vision people. Uh, So what they did is they created a mechanism for people with uh, visual disabilities to connect with worldwide um, a pool of people that are sighted and don't have uh, vision problems. What it is, it's an app, you would be in some situation in, in everyday life, you open up the app, it opens up your camera, it connects you with somebody you can see, and they describe to you what's in you know what you're looking at and then you tell them what you want to do whether it be read the directions or a recipe or you're in a store and whatever and they'll uh do that so it's it's been around for almost a decade they have millions of users they have uh tens of thousands of volunteers sighted volunteers however now be my eyes uh is incorporating gpt uh, to make an AI assistant, which is going to be a game-changing shift in providing this personalized assistant to people with disabilities. And it offers a greater accessibility, efficiency, and independence because they don't have to say, okay, I'm going to connect with a real person. I got to pull them away from their life uh, for me. And is this a trivial question that I'm asking now? They could do it all day long, every day. And so, Josh, I was going to kick it off to you and you can start using, uh, sharing a couple of the examples that Be My Eyes, the uh, uh, virtual assistant with GPT can do. Yeah, let's get specific. So what does that do? Let's get specifics. Let's get specific. First off is identifying food and household items. One of the most important things. Be My Eyes can assist in identifying food items in a grocery store, such as finding the right can of soup or the perfect carton of milk. Let's say the person is blind, you know, with low vision, and they would take a photo of the product that they would like to purchase, but they're not sure what it is or how it can be used. Be My Eyes, the app with power by GPT-4 specifically, can quickly recognize and identify the product in the photo, providing detailed information, you know, uses, benefits, and the app can suggest related products or other personalized recommendations. I've heard of people using this actually for menu creation, Take a picture of this and it gives you uh, recipe uh, suggestions. And then uh, obviously you can see the best, how this would be very, very powerful. Next would be navigating public transportation. So imagine a blind person uh, or low vision user that needs assistance navigating a subway system to reach a specific destination using the Be My Eyes app. They can take a photo of the map and the GPT technology could quickly identify the user's location and provide them personalized directions, almost like a, almost like a, a, a GPS for your car. It'd be GPS for you. So it just it, what a cool, cool app. But just think of the RAM, where this is going. What do you got for us, Dean? Well, we're going to get where it's going. And um, being from uh, New York, Josh, I've seen people that have absolutely no uh, vision disabilities and they can't figure out the subway. Um, so anybody having uh, some kind of assistance is a, is a, is a big help when it comes to the, the subway. Yeah. But yeah. what about reading mail and documents? Didn't you, weren't you going to tell me about? Yeah. So this is low hanging fruit, right? So um, it, it's easy for us to, you know, to see this as something tangible. So it can help you read mail, right? Let's just stick with mail for a second, right? It could help you read mail. You open that, you put it up, you, you put your camera up, you, t- you take the picture, it'll read it to you. 
Um, okay, great, right? But then you could take it as contracts, legal agreements, any educational material. The app can quickly analyze the text, highlight the key information, and even provide additional context because you can have a conversation. Tell me more about that. Um, and explanations to help the user better understand um, the content. Yeah. What about shopping and browsing? Well, yeah, Josh, shopping. Yeah. You know, online. <laughs> So um, Be My Eyes can provide personalized shopping recommendations and suggestions based on your needs and pref preferences because it analyzes previous uh, purchase items and, and looks in your browsing history. The app can suggest new products that are similar or complementary, making it easier for blind and low vision uh, users to find and purchase products they need. Josh, I just wanted to highlight at first when, when I was reading about this, I was like, well, really, how much help is that? But I'm not visually impaired. And so I was like, oh, it took me a second. Like, if you're visually impaired, you have to go through so many more steps just to get to where you were at some point in the past where you and I wouldn't have that problem. And so the app, knowing all of this, can just skip some steps and take you right to where you, uh, right to where you need to be. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, Josh, I, I left uh, the next two for you because they're interesting and they fall into your uh, wheelhouse and your passion. Yeah, so Be My Eyes can use chat uh, GPT-4 technology to assist users in exploring new surroundings such as museums, art galleries, landmarks, and provide like a personalized audio tour. You know, some of the fancy museums you go to that have the little, hey, for 20 extra bucks, you can have our, our little uh, audio tour. Now you're going to just have it and it'll provide all that historical context and even answer questions about the artwork or art artifacts on display and on your way home you can get more information it's pretty cool but enjoying the little things gpt4 can really help you you know with the be my eyes app with personalized recommendations for the blind to enjoy life's little pleasures such as recommending a new book to read or describing a beautiful piece of artwork like i had said or uh, suggesting a new hobby or an activity to try you know, it, the app can analyze the user's interest and preference to provide personalized suggestions, helping one to stay engaged, entertained, inspired. And let me give you an example. Let's say a blind or low vision person loves reading mystery novels. GPT-4 can analyze their reading history and suggest similar titles, just like you would have on Netflix, you know, like it's going to give you those mm -hmm. those suggestions and the app can also provide uh personalized reviews ratings and help the user decide and make an informed decision of which book to choose i'm super so psyched about this technology because i know for the industry i used to be in where it's headed where you'll be able to look simply probably with Wait, your head you got you to tell us what industry was that this is the antique and auction world, but where you would right. be cataloging the contents of someone's home or a, a being an appraiser. I know within it probably a month or two, you're going to be able to photograph the contents of someone's shelf and identify all of the objects on the shelf. And not only that, catalog them and inventory them. So it's going to change everything. And Dean, we keep talking about you know the person who's blind or with low vision i just want to address like you know they can take a picture with their phone or whatever we're talking about this is all going to be headset driven you know the wearables are coming too and you know i've been just you know sony i just was listening about how they are they're really working on this technology and google is working google goggles you know which <clears> they <throat> we're going to bring out kind of it's all coming it's all coming yeah. so they were ahead of their time on that one yeah but this is but this is, I, I know, I'm just waiting for Apple and Google to drop their glasses. It's coming. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting too, Josh. You and I have been talking about this for a while, and we keep saying, um, like, you know, what is Google doing? What is Apple doing? And I feel like what you said is right. Like, they have way more than we think, and they're about to drop it. Like, yeah, I think they're coming. Like, in, yeah, I think there's going to be like, a leap. Yeah. A lot of this stuff is API and it's open source technology. And I think they're letting developers build them the best mousetrap. I think it's a very smart move. Remember, I said that I'll be Nostradamus on this episode. <clears throat> yeah, you just uh, you said that you think and it's a smart move. So let's see if that's actually what they're doing. But either way, let, let's uh, 
let's go back to this uh, and what you you had said about the collectibles industry. Um, okay, so uh, Josh, let's go back to you just uh, mentioned uh, something beyond the uh, you know helping the visually uh, impaired, and you mentioned um, the collectibles industry and that that's going to help. So that's one of the things I wanted to close with is this is is so important for uh, the visually impaired. Uh, to help them with their everyday life. And it's a stepping stone to these other things that it's going to do, like helping in the collectibles world. And some of the stuff is going to be um, things that, that everybody uses every day. For example, the advanced object recognition technology that they use, it could be used in retail and manufacturing settings to quickly identify and analyze products to make inventory management and quality control more efficient by having the app that analyzes visually what is going on. The, the real-time language translation could be used in travel and hospitality industries to provide assistance to people from different uh, cultures and language backgrounds. I think you had mentioned earlier or in a, another podcast that you're waiting for the headsets to be able to pick up, translate I- immediately back and forth without yeah. any, uh, any gaps so we can you know talk live. Uh, and then the augmented reality integration, Josh, could be used in gaming uh, and uh, other entertainment industries to create an immersive experience. This has been talked about with, you know, VR stuff for, you know, I don't even know, 10 years now and a and hundred billion dollars in investment, but this is gonna help bring it, you know, uh, closer. The personalized virtual assistant services could be used in other things in healthcare, health bots we talked about, uh, education industries, which I'm involved in, and I think it's phenomenal, uh, that can, you know, uh, provide personalized support uh, for patients and guidance to patients. And then for students, it could be like chatting with the professor. Yeah. It's exciting times in which we live. And I think it's going to be, this will be like, there's going to be this thing called a radio where you're going to be able to talk. And, and yeah, that's how these are going to We have, Josh, we have to cut that one. You use that in like the last two podcasts ago, you used the radio one. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. I just <laughs> listened to it. One day there's going to be a radio. <laughs> He used the same exact thing. <clears throat> you have another analogy for us? <laughs> How about Ali the alligator? Was that it? <laughs> hey, Dean, you know what this is going to be like? The what? telegraph. <laughs> <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Yeah, no, we're, yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's 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 start our conclusion. Uh, yeah. Again. <clears throat> anyway, Joe, Josh, there. This is the situation where there's so much that you and I can talk about and read about, but you know what? What somebody ends up doing with it in 24 hours or or in 30 days from now is going to be so much different than we're even theorizing right now, and it's going to be it's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's funny because when we talk about be my eyes and like what it started as, I wonder, wow, was this somebody like so like how can I get all this data collection? for the future AI use. I don't think they did start that way, but maybe they did. Maybe they are maybe they were like, oh, this will help people and bring about, you know, this amazing new technology. Just as in a company, um, I think they'd be upset if I told them, but there's a company that's in the antique and collectible world that has been gathering all of this information and data from many data sources. And all these companies were giving them this data which they were then going to use for this exact purpose, but they had the foresight in this case. So I'm wondering if this company actually was like, hey, we're gonna do this, but we're also gonna be collecting for R&D credits for research and development, <laughs> you know, something in the future. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just pondering if, because there's so many things that we capture data for, and then you go, man, I really wish I would have kept all that. I wish I would have. And- re- yeah. The the downside, Josh, there's probably a lot of organizations and maybe this one that put all that effort in for nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's 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 my I'm just curious if they're <clears throat> going to benefit from what they've what they've done, this great that they've created. All right. But, so I'm going to uh, recap uh, anybody. If you know anybody with, uh, you know, some vision disabilities, uh, send them over to Be My Eyes. It's an app. It's on Android and uh Apple um, and with the virtual assistant or with sighted, you know, volunteers, uh, it's really something to, you know, to watch at a minimum and to check out if you need the help. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thanks guys. We, Hey, 
please subscribe to our channel. Dean and I do this for our health, but we would love <laughs> to have more subscribers just so we know that we're not doing this for our own amusement. <clears throat> that was All right, part. awesome. Hey, yeah. Leave Thanks your comments below. Guys. Like, shut up, guys. You can leave that in the bottom, too. Actually, you can leave that, but you can say, shut the hell up, guys. By the way, I've been using it for this because I want to hear what people are using it for. Yeah, me too. What are you using AI right. for? <laughs> That's another just, episode. Just All right, go. Man. See you. See ya.